Coming up on News 2, more reaction after Jovenza's recent statements regarding its financial condition and proposed shutdown of the St. Croix fuel truck rack and fuel supply. Plus, where are we? The latest on the general election ballots, recount requests, and more from VI elections. Also, tis the season. Start your holiday fun off the right way. We can help. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh. Topping on newscast, Senator Kenneth Gittins is speaking out against what he sees as the governor trying to force the Senate to make a decision on the proposed Hovenza agreement. News 2's Yarka Parsons has more from the senator. Senator Kenneth Gittins says his hand won't be forced when it comes to voting on the future of Hovenza. Voting on this measure now leaves us uh, with no real time to consider the effects of the territory for the next 40 plus years. In a recorded statement, the lawmaker responded to comments from Governor DeYoung over the weekend calling for action from senators. Before them is a proposed operating agreement between the VI government and the prospective buyer of the refinery, Atlantic Basin Refining VI. We recognize the risk um, that's involved with respect to the company, but we think those are mitigated by the mere fact that not to do this deal um, and not to approve this transaction, if they are closed, will actually hurt us even more as a territory. Hinton says he needs more information to proceed. While I do support the growth and development of our economy, especially in the St. Croix District, uh, I will not consider anything that I do not have full disclosure of. The governor in his statement said he and his team have responded to a number of questions from senators and in fact plan to provide the final piece this week. They hope will speed a decision. We have one more report that we're going to get to the senators this week, which is the economic impact analysis. We really wanted to make sure that they covered all the issues with respect to the benefits associated with the construction phases of a restarted refinery. Both the executive and legislative branches have held firm, senators wanting more time before making a decision and the governor urging them forward. But it won't be until the next session on the 19th that any decision might be made. Erica Parsons, News 2. Last week, Governor John DeYoung urged the 30th legislature to wrap up some outstanding issues that he says will be financially harmful to the territory if unaddressed. The governor said the issues of worker compensation reform and the unemployment trust fund solvency both need to be addressed as soon as possible in the upcoming Senate sessions. Being able to address both of those would, one, allow us to bring some solvency back to the workers' compensation fund and also put us in a posture to begin to repay the unemployment trust fund loan. And right now, a number of providers, beneficiaries, are looking for payments with respect to the workers' compensation fund that we just can't meet because we've not been able to have that change. And those two, again, have not moved, and, and those are areas that impact greatly. The election system of the Virgin Islands is one day away from certifying the deadline of the runoff election, but one district is still dealing with outstanding issues from the general election. News News April Night is standing by with an update of where we are in this stage of the election process. It certainly has been a long drawn election process, Sandy, and we're hoping that tomorrow, Wednesday, the deadline for certification of the runoff election finally marks the end of the election season. So here's where we are. On St. Thomas, in spite of calls for a recount by six unsuccessful candidates, one newly elected election board member and a very vocal resident, the St. Thomas St. John board denied the recount petition. On St. Croix, a recount petition was also filed by Senator Alicia Hansen, who claims there were no less than 14 discrepancies in the counting of the general election ballots. That request was granted last week, but St. Croix Board Chairman Adelbert Bryan said the board meeting where that request was approved was illegal. So the meeting was scheduled. They didn't show up. They convened a meeting in the afternoon illegally and claimed that they were creating a recount. I don't know if you have people wasting time with them. Go through the 2,600 votes behind the closest person. So, if you don't want to waste money, waste and spend money, that's fine with me. Also, for the second time this election season, the Supreme Court went, went against a decision by the Superior Court. According to the Supreme Court, the Superior Court should not have dismissed the case 
filed by resident Al Haynes challenging Basil Otley's eligibility. Otley was Delegate Donna Christensen's running mate in her bid for the gubernatorial seat. The Superior Court had ruled that the, ca the case was filed past the five-day window for eligibility challenges. The Supreme Court, however, stated that the Superior Court should have heard the case nonetheless. It added that even though the election is to be certified Wednesday, the case is not moot because the situation can happen again. The Superior Court did not issue an opinion on whether Haynes' case had merit or whether Otley's candidacy was valid or not. The season wraps up with the runoff election certification on Wednesday. We'll keep you updated on any developments. Sandy, back to you. Well, thanks for that, April. According to Senator Hansen's team, the board was supposed to discuss the recount procedure today, but at least one St. Croix board member said no such discussion was scheduled. Comment to keep you updated. St. Croix marked World AIDS Day Monday with a candlelight ceremony in Frederickstead. Residents and visitors marched down King Street dressed in red before gathering at the Caribbean Museum's Center for the Arts. There, they listened to information and stories of the disease that once only offered a death sentence. Organizers for the event also talked education initiatives to bring awareness to the community of AIDS and related illnesses. Meanwhile, on St. Thomas, Hope Inc held a ceremony also at 6 p.m. at the waterfront in remembrance of residents who are fighting or have died from the virus. Balloons were released and a moment of silence followed in honor of those living with the illness. There was also free HIV AIDS, blood pressure and diabetes screenings, which the organization offers all year round. According to Hope staff, it is a good time to remind the public of their responsibility to know their status and report any cases they are aware of to lessen the possibility of transmission. Officials of the Wanlui Hospital and Medical Center congratulated the 2014 Spring and Fall inductees of the hospital's Candy Striper Volunteer Program at a graduation ceremony held last week. The inaugural class was recognized for its support and committed commitment to Wanlui. Candy Stripers are known for their red and white striped uniforms. They have been providing assistance to hospitals throughout the nation for nearly 70 years. Students are recruited from St. Croix's public, private, and parochial schools. Each candidate is required to complete a volunteer application as well as a one-page essay and minimum 3.0 GPA. Three organizations with national reach have joined the fight against the proposed Coral Bay Marina last week in three separate statements. The Friends of the VI National Parks, the National Parks Conservation Association, and the National Parks Traveler all expressed concerns about the impact the St. John Mega Yacht Marina would have on the environment. The Summer's End Group was granted permits by the local CZM committee to pursue development. The VI Conservation Society and reps from the Save Coral Bay Group both say those permits should not have been granted without Summers End addressing the environmental defects. The VICS filed appeals on November 14th, contesting the permits. We'll turn our attention overseas in the wake of the shooting death of Michael Brown, the hands of Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. New York City is proposing the use of body cameras that some suggest should be required gear for its police officers. The camera weighs three ounces and costs between $450 and $900 and records both audio and video. The New York Public Advocate says this has become urgent after two recent high-profile cases, the one in Ferguson and the death of Eric Garner in police custody on Staten Island. Proponents say the cameras could come in handy in cases where police officers are accused of misconduct. In keeping our eye on the economy, Black Friday promotions along with factors like Falling gas prices and low interest rates helped drive auto sales higher in November. And this year, Super Saturday, the final Saturday before Christmas, may knock Black Friday out of the top spot as the number one day for holiday sales. Shopper Track says Thanksgiving Day business ate into Black Friday sales, helping to explain a nearly 7% decline from last year. Here's a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Well, stock market watch, the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P all up, the Dow 102, NASDAQ 28, S&P 13. Coming up on News 2, what to do for Christmas. We've got your, your Christmas list. Stay tuned.
it's time for our Carnival Corner. The Herbert Grigg Home for Seniors was transformed Saturday as the very first event of St. Croix's Carnival got on the way. Now this year's theme is a majestic scene for Crucian Carnival, Christmas Carnival 2014, 2015. And that's just what it was with the many lights and decorations surrounding the grounds. The mini fest was a treat for the elder residents who were not able to see the parade and other carnival events. There was live music by various bands and a mini parade. There were lots of vendors at the mini carnival and of course, plenty of food. Meanwhile, tis the season. The ninth annual Holiday for Hope benefit is coming up on Thursday, December 4th. It's an annual event aimed to provide Christmas gifts to agencies such as Marine Toys for Tots Foundation, the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Virgin Islands, the Richard Patrick Henry Hospitality Scholarship, and CASA of the VI. It will be held on Thursday, December 4th. Again, that's at the Palms at Pelican Cove on St. Croix. It's presented by the St. Croix Hotel and Tourism Association and the St. Croix Chamber of Commerce. And of course, TV2CBS is one of the many sponsors. To Dupark Mall, reps say they are prepared to light the largest Christmas tree in the VI, then welcome Santa Claus and his helpers, and some have some endless fun at Tutu Park Mall's annual Christmas tree lighting. That's on Saturday, December 6th. Entertainment is by the St. Thomas Majorettes and the French Dance Academy. You can have your pics taken with Santa and dance to the music of Red Lion Sounds. It all begins at 6 p.m. Now on St. Croix, Sunny Al Shopping Center is holding their traditional tree lighting ceremony Saturday, December 6th. That's at 5 p.m. in the courtyard. Entertainment will include Music from DJ Call, Music in Motion, JG Management, and Word of Life Learning Center. Of course, all the stores will be open with special Christmas deals. Again, that's this Saturday at Sunny L at 5 p.m. Well, many are presently down at the Crown Bay Shopping Center for the Holiday Fest for holiday shopping sales. The center stores, there's music and live entertainment. That all began at 11 a.m. and it will continue through midnight. Featuring local steel orchestras, Milos King, Stanley and the Ten Sleepless Nights, and Cool Sessions Brass. Vendors will have local crafts, food, traditional holiday pastries, and drinks on sale. Face painting, bounce houses, traditional storytelling, and Santa Claus bearing gifts. Now the highlight of the event is the Christmas tree lighting. Viper is also celebrating their 45th anniversary. Speaking of anniversary, Waiko is celebrating their 30th Christmas tree lighting in conjunction with the Haven Site Mall Merchants Association. Events begin from 11 a.m. and it goes on until 10 p.m. on Wednesday, December 10th on the dock. Entertainment will be provided throughout the day by a multitude of youth groups including Flambo Combo, EBO Steel Owls, Gladys Abraham Choir and much more. Cool Sessions Brass will headline the evening's festivities. Now the Christmas tree will be lit at 6 p.m. right after Santa's arrival. Waiko also will open its first ever Kitty Christmas Village. Now you can expect vendors, great shopping and entertainment. And in keeping with tradition, join us on CBS TV 2. We will bring you some of the sights and sounds live from 6.30 to 7. Well, hundreds of people turned out Saturday to support the first ever Animal Jam. Five local organizations that focus on animal welfare, they partner to help fundraise for the effort to save animal lives. The all-day affair had food, music, games, and lots of vendors. It's the first time in the history of the island that all of the animal welfare organizations are working together, arm in arm, mutual support. We're splitting the proceeds equally, and the idea is to basically promote what everyone is doing and make uh, raise awareness about the animal, abandoned animal problems on the island, how serious they are, and all the work that's being done to fix them. Good job there. We'll be sure to stick around. Your news to Active Weather Forecast is coming up next. <laughs> 